Aleluya. Amén. Aleluya. I didn't know that it was um, Brother Sam Odia that was in front of me yesterday. <laughs> I, I met him in the course of my doctoral study. And thank you very much, sir. <laughs> and uh, of course, the bank wells. <laughs> thank you very much. Amen. And that is to show that I have friends in the house. <laughs> Amen. Shall we lift up our hands this morning and let's glorify Jesus? He's the head of the church. He's the savior of the body. All things are made by him and for him. Whether they are visible or invisible, thrones or dominions, principalities and powers, it's before all things. In him all things consist. It has pleased the Father that all fullness should dwell in him. And of his fullness we have received grace for grace. For the Lord came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is the right scepter. For you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, the Lord your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Lord, this morning we want to say, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Thank you for choosing us before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blaming your sight. Thank you for sealing us with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise and the glory of your name. Lord, as we teach this morning, grant unto us to the end that everyone is blessed, everyone is lifted, everyone is edified, everyone is activated, everyone is instructed, and everyone is encouraged through the teaching of the word and by the power of the spirit. Thank you for the release of the glory of God. Thank you for the release of the grace of God. Thank you for the release of the God kind of faith. Spreading through the many and causing thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. To the praise and the glory of your name. Thank you Father. We give you praise in Jesus name. And the people say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. God bless. All right. Now, a couple of scriptures, and we get into the word this morning. But again, I want to specially appreciate Dr. And Mrs. Andy Osakwe again this morning for, <laughs> for extending grace. Swami Bible Church is home. I think I've said that over and over again. How God supernaturally brought us here to come and learn in those early days of our ministry in Abuja. And it's evident. I remember our coming in those days. We used to come Wednesdays and um, then attended a couple of conventions. Some of them at the Women Development Center. And uh, uh, there was a particular one, Dr. Nasseri Siddiqui. I remember. I mean, it was a very powerful one. Um, then the likes of... Uh, Doctor from Canada, um, Okut Iyank was also around, and uh, and some other people, and uh, we bless God for, for for that. Thank you very much again for the invitation, and uh, I do not take it for granted. So a couple of scriptures as we start this morning, because like Pastor said, we want to go. <laughs> Ephesians one ten. Ephesians one ten talks about the dispensation of the fullness of the times. And, and it makes us to understand that what God does at such a time is to gather together in one all things that are in Christ both in heaven and on the earth. So there are dimensions of Christ that are still in heaven. There are dimensions of Christ on the earth. But when a button is pressed that is called the dispensation of the fullness of the times. There won't be any dichotomy again. Everything that is available in Christ in heaven and on earth will come together in one. So you don't have to wait until you get to heaven to experience some dimensions of Christ. There's a dispensation that we are in that prophetically this conference is ushering us into and that is the dispensation of the fullness of the times. So there's a gathering together. 
every resource, every spiritual capital, spiritual equity that is in Christ will converge. Because those things are in heaven because people are not believing God for them to be operationalized on the earth. It's not that they are supposed to be heavenly. But, but God is now saying there's a dispensation that is called the fullness of the times. And there's a gathering together of all those things. And that's when we begin to see that fullness is very, very powerful because he allows possibility beyond the earth to manifest on the earth. He allows possibility that are supposed to just be heavenly. Because if you, like, just like we started yesterday, let's even say this intelligence we are dealing with, this spiritual capital we are dealing with is 2 billion years old. Just for, for the purpose of illustration. So far, so good. Mankind only partook 6,000 years out of the 2 billion. And there's no way you can condense spiritual capital that is billions of years old into time. That is that the latitude that we've got that is just about 6,000 years. So, so how do you compress uh, what cannot be compressed into time? <laughs> So that means if God should allow fullness to come into time without firstly trying to compress it, time will cease to exist. This universe will just disappear because it cannot contain that level of energy. That energy level is so rare, is so powerful that God had to create systems of advantage as a way of breaking it down. So God broke it down into three broke it down into grace, broke it down into faith, and broke it down into glory. So that once you're on the grace lane, it's an invitation to move into the faith lane. And once you're on the faith lane, it's an invitation to experience his glory. So that at least you will begin to now see, at the end of the tunnel, at the end of that equation, that what God is inviting you into is fullness. Because if God should just put fullness on us, <laughs> without regulating, just like what, when Moses said, show me your glory. And God said, no. What you are asking for, if you see it, you can't be alive. <laughs> because it will consume you. He said, nobody sees my glory. And they are alive. So, and that is where we experience the fullness of God, where everything about you is dead. So that everything about the glory of God is operationalized. Because you can't see a level of glory and be alive. And that doesn't mean you won't be breathing. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the fact that your agenda will die. Everything about your preferences, your priorities will go. Because the glory of God will now set the pace. And upon all, the glory will be a defense. Praise God forevermore. So God had to create this system of advantage because there's so much in Christ. But in this kind of dispensation, those things are brought together. Now another scripture. Ephesians 3, 19. Now Paul now began to pray for the believer. And he said, one of the prayers, and, and I, I, I know this is a word church. I've, I've been part of Summit, and I know this is a solid church. And I know you pray these prayers. And you see, Ephesians is a very powerful epistle of Apostle Paul. Sandwiching between all the revelations that he gave. In Ephesians 1, he began to talk about how the believer is blessed with every spiritual blessing in every place, went to chapter 2. He began to talk about how you are quickened. You were dead in trespasses and sins, walking according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the hair, the spirit that now walks in the sons of disobedience. And how we had that conversation and all that. And he got to chapter number 3. And he began to talk about the fact that if you know of the dispensation of the grace of God that has been given to me, out by revelation and made known unto me the mysteries. That is not made available to the sons of men, but it's now being made available by the Spirit of God to the holy, holy apostles and prophets that the Gentiles should partake. And he began to talk about all that. And in between talking about all that in chapter 1 and chapter 3, Paul offered two solid prayer points. In chapter number 1, we know the prayer point when he began to pray that the eyes of understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and so on and so forth. But when he got to chapter number 3, he said, for this cause I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And he began to pray that I will grant unto you according to Dunam, I mean, to be invigorated with dunamis in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith and that you may be filled, look at that, 
with all the fullness of God. So you could see that Paul also understood fullness and he knew that there was nobody on the earth at that time that was already filled with that fullness. So it became a prayer point. And that is a prayer we continue to pray as believers. Paul said, I had to bow my knees to the Father and he was praying for them so that they could be filled with all the fullness of God. And in Ephesians 4.13, Again, he began to talk about that we all come to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, just like we were saying yesterday, because he was the only first person to operationalize fullness. To a perfect man. And what is that? To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the reason why Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was written. It wasn't to show us the history of Christ. It was to show us that there is a measure. And that measure is also a stature. That once you get into that measure, once you get into that stature, what you manifest is the fullness of God. Look at how he put it again. The measure of the stature. Of the, like what we looked at yesterday, the first miracle of Jesus. And all the miracles of Jesus, you realize that it was just manifesting that measure, and that stature, and that fullness of Christ. And Paul was praying again here for the believer that that is the whole essence of becoming born again. To get to such a time that that measure of Christ becomes your measure. That stature of Christ becomes your stature. So the same way there was a storm. And deliberately, you see, because it's a measure, it's a stature. Jesus was asleep. <laughs> and they woke him up. And they said, Master, don't you care that we'll perish? And he looked at them, maybe even yawning. Ah, because you see, that measure has got nothing to do with whether you are sleeping or you are awake. It's a stature. So even if you come from sleep, you don't need to pray in tongues for you to command the storm. Because you see, that measure, whether you are sleeping or you are awake, is the same measure. It's a measure. It's a stature. So Christ woke up and he rebuked the storm and the wind. And you know the next thing he, he, he did, he looked at them and he said, where's your faith? So that meant waking him up to rebuke the storm was not faith. Okay, you, are, you know, I said yesterday that Christ taught faith. What Christ did was what is called scenario-based view of faith. So he wasn't going to give you formulas right there. He used events and scenarios to teach faith. Imagine, oh Lord, oh God, don't you care that we perish? And they woke him up. So we think waking him up is faith. So he woke up, rebuked the storm and the wind, and he still said, where's your faith? To tell them that that was not faith. So what was faith? Looking unto Jesus. So if in the midst of the storm, before that storm, Christ went into Tesco. Okay, uh, sorry. I mean, this is, which one do you have there? <laughs> Shop right, sorry. <laughs> you know, I was lived in Abuja, but uh, before I moved to the UK, I moved to Lagos. So my memory of Abuja, I was only here for five years. It's, it's distant memory. So imagine what happened that day. Because if you, we're talking about the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And the way you get that measure and stature, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John already made the job easy for you. Because you only get it by looking unto Jesus. He's the author. There is no faith dimension you want to walk in that Christ is not author. And he's the finisher. So that day as they were going, Christ went into the store, bought his own pillow. If they were looking at Jesus, everybody should get their own pillow too. And when the storm came, Christ was sleeping on the pillow. So that means to survive that storm, sleep is the way. And that was when they woke him up and he said, don't you guys get it? This is a measure. This is the stature. Just sleep. How can Christ be sleeping and you are praying? So you are not looking unto Jesus. You are drawing your faith inspiration from fear, not from Christ. So there's a measure in the midst of storm that is sleeping. <laughs> so what Christ expected all of them to do was every man a pillow. 
just find any space in that sheet. Because how can the one who created storm be sleeping and you are waking him up and you think that is fate? So only for him to wake up, he said, where is your fate? If you read in another synopsis of the gospel, he said, oh, ye of little faith. He even rebuked them. It was like, this is not fate. Come on. There was a measure that was talking there. <laughs> so in the midst of the storm, there are times you don't need to pray, just sleep. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. So sleep is a gift. Because people don't also know that sleep is a weapon of war. <laughs> There's something that is called the peace of God. It passes all understanding. Because understandably, you are supposed to be praying, but you are sleeping. Because when God was going to bring the woman out of Adam, God caused him to sleep. There's a dimension of warfare that it is God that will cause you to sleep. But the Bible says, and Adam slept. Because for so many of us, he's trying to introduce sleep, but you have refused to sleep. <laughs> In fact, you are awake. <laughs> and you want to do vigil. And you want to pray. And Christ is saying, where? You can imagine how, how they felt. Look at it. He said, why are you fearful? Oh, you have little faith. Give it to us in Luke. Then he, he, he and it was a little faith. If, if you look at it in Luke, and maybe one of the Gospels again, thank you for the brother helping us with that. Uh, so I need to clear this out of the way so that we can get into this morning's message. <laughs> Praise God. No, no, that same scripture in Luke, where we book the storm. Luke chapter number, what is that? Or you can also look at it in Mark. Because we are still coming to Mark. But, but whatever, so that that will not stop us. He looked at them and he rebuked it and he said, this is not faith. So faith was, look unto Jesus. If Jesus was asleep on a pillow, then you should not be awake. Because you cannot be more Catholic than the Pope. How can the one you are praying to be sleeping? And you that you are praying, you are shouting. <laughs> and that's why he woke up and he, he said, you want it to be, he said, but let, so, that, so that in Summit 2022, somebody will not misunderstand faith. Let me also correct that impression that what, what just happened now was not faith. Because he still asked them, where is your faith? Then there was another time. Because we are talking about that measure. So this time, he was not the one walking on the water. And they were in the, in, in the I, I used part of that illustration yesterday. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, because now we have learned our lessons. What, what is the lesson? Whatever you are doing is what we are supposed to be doing. Now that you are walking on water, oh, oh, you, you can see that Peter is now beginning to understand that measure. So now that you are walking on water, there's no point in me sitting on this boat. If it is you, I just need to know that it is you, let me come. And I thought the Lord would say, hmm, Peter, you are always jumping like Puma, you know. <laughs> and I thought the Lord would be angry and say, Peter, you are asking the wrong question. The right question should be, how many days do I need to fast so that I can walk on water? You did not even ask, Lord, what kind of spiritual activity did you get into to generate this level of spiritual capital? And how do I participate in this spiritual capital by bringing my own spiritual equity? <laughs> and I thought that would be the right question. I, or I thought the Lord would say, lift up your hand. <laughs> Receive grace. <laughs> and look at, because it's a measure. Look at what he said. He said, come. Ah. We, maybe Peter just finished a bowl of pan and yam. He wasn't fasting. And the Lord just said, come. Just like that. That means the Lord was making us to understand that while you are seated in the boats of life, you already have enough faith to walk on water. You don't need performance. You don't need preparation. Because the Lord did not say, go fast and pray for three days and now come. There is a measure. There is a stature. That, that look, once you make the request now, you can have it now. And it says, come. And it looked impossible until Peter stepped out of the boat. Because faith is like walking on water. 
It looks impossible until you start doing it. And the reason why we are bringing this out is that this conference is communicated to someone a measure of faith that will cause you to walk on financial waters. Amen. It will look impossible because God is raising billionaires in this house. Amen. Oh, it shows that you don't believe it. <laughs> and guess what? There, there are billionaires in purpose who will finance the gospel and solve the problems of humanity. So God is raising a lot of social entrepreneurs in the house who will use business intelligence to generate social impact and that will facilitate the preaching of the gospel. So financial waters will work on it. And guess what? What produced me, please sit down, was looking unto Jesus. The moment Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he started seeing the wind. Ladies and gentlemen, there is wind here. Because Peter got to a level in unbelief that he started seeing what you and I cannot see. <laughs> How do you see the wind? Oh, yeah. Because I'm trying to show you that when you're on the faith lane, what you are seeing is only you that is seeing it. How, how can a human being see wind? And, and not just seeing wind. He said when he saw the wind, boisterous. <laughs> Peter began to sink. Look at it. What many people try to do on the faith lane is that instead of obeying the word, you want to address water. So when the Lord says, come out, here you are, you are like water. Change your surface tension. Archimedes principle suspended. Law of flotation. Charles law, Boyce law, Avogadro's hypothesis. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Who told you it was surface tension that sustained Peter? <laughs> so instead of walking by faith, you want to address water. You want to be sure this water will support my weight. Law of flotation suspended. You are wasting your time. Because we are dealing with fullness. The one that says come already took care of all that. And that, that's to show you that it was not about the water. It was about Peter. He was already walking. Then he started looking at the wind. He took his eyes off Jesus. And he started sinking. And like I said yesterday, that was in the presence of Jesus. That means Jesus said, my presence will never violate the law of faith. Because if I don't allow you to sink, people will think in his presence, we can bring on belief and still get away with it. He said, no. I will be here, but you'll sink. But I will only extend grace and mercy. <laughs> and he grabbed him and he looked at him. Look, look at what he's telling him. He said, why did you doubt? So, so doubt, the beautiful thing about the environment is that you cannot manipulate the environment. The environment understands faith faster. When faith is operationalized, you don't need to talk to water. Water knows. And once unbelief is operationalized also, water refuses to cooperate. I mean, you can imagine the water cooperated with Peter. And suddenly, maybe the water was looking at Peter. I said, it's not that we like you. But there's something about the environment. When faith is manifested, we don't have a choice. We have to line up. And the same way, unbelief said, did he doubt? <laughs> he said, water, you don't have a choice. This guy must sink. And Peter started sinking. The same place where he once walked, he started sinking. And that is what we're talking about. Because after this conference, God is going to give somebody, just like what we said, and when those testimonies start coming forth, just know it's God. Because people are going to literally walk into the kind of financial fortunes that is unprecedented. As a matter of fact, this house is now a house of wealth. That is now made easy for people to come into financial wealth, financial abundance in such an unprecedented manner. Because here the word of the Lord, the Lord has seen that the heart of many in this house is right. 
and it's ripe for the kind of financial intervention that is called fullness. 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 And we'll receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, where I'm going to start from, Colossians 1.19. For it pleased the Father that in him, <laughs> you know, we're talking about fullness. But Paul got to a point, Paul said, it's, it's not beyond fullness. Paul said, all the fullness. <laughs> in this conference, we can only cover one fullness. <laughs> we're trying but Paul now said there's something that is called all. Why did he please the Father that all the fullness should dwell in Christ? Every time you see the Father pleased, it's because faith is operationalized. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that means the greatest faith being to ever walk the earth. And the extent to which you walk by faith is the extent to which the Father is pleased to extend fullness to you. And I don't need to overemphasize that because this is a house that over the years, faith is at the core of what we do. Faith is at the core of our teachings. This is a house of faith. I've been here. So I know I can speak to that. So all that God is challenging us with again this morning is to up our faith dimensions. Because this next dimension we are stepping into, he must please the Father. That means once the Father is pleased, fullness is summoned. He pleased the Father. So when, when Jesus was moving here, that was the first time the Father now says, okay, now that we've got someone down here who can manifest fullness. What, what, what we've been trying to do from Genesis to Malachi that was becoming very difficult to do. What Adam could not do, what Moses could not come into. I mean, Christ now came and the Father now said, let every fullness, all the fullness begin to respond now. So by the time you see Christ talking, teaching, Performing miracles. He was demonstrating what you and I, what manner of people. Don't forget that Ephesians 4. He said that we might become and have what is called the knowledge of the Son of God. There's a knowledge that that stature and that fullness is underpinning. Now let's go to Mark 11 now. The message of the day. So all that was just to say, good morning, how are you doing? I hope you slept well. <laughs> God is good. We have a very handsome pastor. <laughs> and a very beautiful mama. <laughs> Amen. You know, I said yesterday, Dr. Sakwe is always looking younger and younger. I, I know, I, I know, I, I know, by the time you are 70, sir, you still be looking so young. <laughs> At this rate. <laughs> and, and, and young boys we might, might just think you are their mate because... <laughs> You know, if Dr. Andy should come into the university now, some people might just think, <laughs> maybe it's in 300 level. <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm trusting God for that grace. You look so young, and you are aging, but you are looking. It's the glory of God. It's the glory of God. <laughs> Amen. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said, go into the village opposite to you. And as soon as you have entered it, you find it called tide, and which no one sat. Lose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord has a need of it, and immediately will let it send it. And they went their way. We know the story. Then from that, the next day, when they had come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seen from a five feet, three having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And he came to read, he found nothing but leaves. For it was not, please note that, it was not, note it, <laughs> it was not. So it's not that he did not know. <laughs> so that's why the writer stated it. I mean, this was John Mark. John Mark had to write it that, don't get it twisted. Even the Lord himself knew it was not the season. But we're looking at fullness. In response, ah, <laughs> I think you respond because somebody says something to you. 
So that means that fig actually said something to Jesus. But whatever was said was not captured for, for our learning. But Jesus responded. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. So they came to Jerusalem. And of course, all that happened. Now in the morning, verse 20, as they passed, they saw the feet dried up from the root. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the feet which you cause has withered away. And Jesus said to them, Fullness of faith. Have faith in God. And, and before we begin to speculate, what does it mean to have faith in God? Verse 23, he began to explain that process. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says will be done, he will have Whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, what things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. When it comes to fullness, especially when you want to move from faith to faith, this is a very good case study. What the Lord does is to first of all give you a preamble for the major thing that will happen subsequently. So here was the Lord wanting to introduce the concept that is called the God kind of faith. But he didn't go there directly. He made sure a day before something happened to teach the lower dimension of that lesson so that by the time it gets into the fullness of the message of faith, people will understand. So the first story was that he just, he just got there and he called two of his disciples and he said, he said, go into that village. Remember the testimony I shared yesterday about that 32-year-old pastor? Now, this is the secret. On the faith lane, for fullness to be activated, what you must say functions like password. Things are passworded in the realm of the spirit. How many of us have passwords on our phones or your laptop? Let's say the password is 2603. And you put 2602. So the system will now say, oh, you only missed one letter. Let's have mercy on him. Let's still open. Does it happen that way? <laughs> but, but it's just one number short. 2603, 2602, or you put 2703. And the system, the, 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 the laptop will speak to itself. It said, he almost got it. Let me allow him. After all, he's the owner. <laughs> he's my owner. Why, why should I deny my owner access? And my owner only missed just one. Does it work that way? So on the faith lane, instructions are passworded. You only say what he has asked you to say. Yesterday night we learned do what he has asked you to do. A lot of people don't have problems with that. They are doers. But many people are not sayers. <laughs> Imagine the Lord said going to that village. Whenever the Lord is giving us an instruction, it's because he has sorted out the matter. Let's read that story this way. What that story was telling us was that the Lord already had a previous interaction with the owners of the donkey. Possibly he did something for them. Possibly he helped them to fix their roof when he was a carpenter. <laughs> Whatever. And he told them, don't pay me now. Or payday will come. And the day payday is going to come, those I'm going to send. This is how you know I sent them. This is what they will say. You see, like that story yesterday, we get it wrong. Whenever the Lord is saying, this is what you must say, that means on the other side of the equation, he has also instructed somebody that when somebody says this, this is how you must respond. This is where you get to know that nice is not a fruit of the spirit. It's the name of a musician. <laughs> because on the faith lane, you are not a nice guy. It's the result you are about. You walk in love, but you are not nice. Because somebody will be like, how can, look at those disciples, just go to that village, lose the donkey, 
lose the foe. And if anyone should challenge you, this is what you must say. What did he ask them to say? The Lord has a need of it. And, and look at, actually people challenge them. And the moment they said the Lord has a need of it, just imagine they say, we are not thieves. Oh, oh we are nice guys, we're just minding our business. It was actually Jesus that asked us to come. Let, let me break that down for you. It's just like God says to you now, that go to the home of Pastor Andy and go to his garage. Don't even knock the door and just drive out the car. The Lord did not say, go and salute the master of the house. There you see those donkeys, they just lose it. Because in fullness, he has authority over everything. And look at the owners. That means in fullness, ever before he gives you an instruction, he has already instructed the other side, whether they know or not. Just like Elijah and the widow. Here was God telling Elijah to go to the widow. And, and if you look at that widow, the widow perhaps did not know. But in God, because God is operating what is called fullness, it doesn't matter whether the other side is aware or not. As a matter of fact, it is your faith at times that will get them into a zone where they get, become aware too. Because the moment Elijah spoke to that woman, awareness started coming in. That you don't need to die in this family. That this is God sending a man of God to you so that you can survive this famine. For the barrel of meal will not waste and the flag of oil will not cease until the Lord brings rain. That was the word the woman needed. So the woman needed Elijah more than Elijah needed the woman. But many of us weaken the hold of faith by trying to say what he has not asked us to say. So how about God? Because now he just gave us a dimension of fullness now called wealth. How about God asking you to call someone tomorrow and he tells you this is what you must say to him. Like that story, in fact, the Baba said there was a particular church that even brought 500 million naira. Manager's check. <laughs> and he said he looked at it and said, thank you. I'm not selling. It's not for you. Then that church now told another that church, they were like, okay, maybe you didn't offer enough. Another church now had another 100 million to it. Until the 32 year old pastor came. And he said, Baba, you are the owner of this land. <laughs> he said, the Lord told us to come and meet you that you should give us this land. And the Baba started crying. In fact, the pastor said he was at some point afraid also. That, Why is the old man crying? Am I? And, and the next thing, the man just called his son. And the man called his lawyer. He said, 25 years I've been waiting for this day. Because 25 years ago, the Lord told me I must give this land to a church. But not only must I give it to a church. He said, any pastor that walks in here without offering money that is just saying the land is ours, I should give it to the person. Welcome to fullness. at even that instruction for the Lord to know that there was a donkey tied there. So that means there are breakthroughs still tied. And your assignment is just to go and lose it. How is that supposed to be a problem? There are finances tied up. Especially at this time when money is changing in Nigeria. Oh, get ready. Just make sure you are at the right place at the right time. Manifesting righteousness. I mean, look, look at the instruction again. Let's look at the logic. And for the Lord to say, go there, that means he knew something was tied there. And look at fullness. He said, a donkey that no man ever rode. How was that possible? That somebody will raise a donkey, a full donkey, and yet nobody rode it. There are still dimensions of wealth unprecedented in this land. Dimension of favor. Because look, look at the logic of it. How can you raise a donkey? It becomes mature, ready to be ridden, and yet nobody wrote it. Waiting for only Christ. 
So, so there are wealth locked up in accounts in different places, houses. They are just waiting for you. And for as long as you don't take that step of faith, they will continue to wait. That means that donkey was waiting until the Lord said, lose it and bring it. But however, in fullness, he said, just make sure you understand the purpose of God for what you are getting into. Because it's not about you. The Lord has a need of it. We're believing God this morning for people who will say exactly what he has asked them to say. To whoever he's asking them to say to. Have you read the story of Howard Carter and Lester Sumra before? How Howard Carter met Lester Sumra. Or how Lester Sumra, beg your pardon, met Howard Carter. Lester Sumra, the Lord came to him in a dream and he said, you are going to meet your mentor in life by the name Howard Carter. And when you meet him, these are the words you should say to him. Over the years, because Howard Carter was a major minister at that time, everybody wanted to travel with him. And Howard Carter kept on turning all of them down. Because God also spoke to Howard Carter that the one you are going to travel with, the day you meet him, this is what he will say to you. The two men never met. And Lester Sombra just heard that Howard Carter was ministering the program and he went there. And after the meeting, he went to meet him and he said word for word. Howard Carter looked at him. And he said, did you say those words? He said, for 10 years I've been waiting for you, up in. And that's how they started. And that was what activated the ministry of Dr. Lester Sombra. So that means if this kind of instruction is going to come our way, we have to be very, very sensitive. Faith is not an offline thing. Faith is an online thing. Your data must be active. It must never go down. You don't operate on the faith lane offline. You don't switch on data and switch off data. Because instructions can come at any time. And the Lord can just say, look at that guy. Say this to him. I've just described for us in the house this morning the kind of breakthroughs we're going to be having. At the level of just saying what the Lord is asking us to say. And whether it makes sense or not, please say it. He's just showing us one of the greatest secrets of fullness. It's locked up in saying. And, and that was how Christ operationalized fullness, saying. Just saying. Saying. So you wake up in the morning and the Lord is saying, call X, Y, Z and tell them this. <laughs> and you just call. And you are just speaking normally. Meanwhile, on the other side, it's weighty. Because the moment they challenge them, they say, why are you losing that? And the moment they just say, the Lord has a need of it. Look at those people. They just are smiling. <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we know the meaning of that. You, you might not know, but we know. So you have to take it. Just go. Password. So write it down on your note. What is my password for this season? To unlock wealth, favor, and whatever the Lord wants to give us this season calls for password because dimensions of God are passworded. Let me step down again because we want to get to the second part now. Somebody say password. So over the years, what I've realized is that people try to manufacture their confessions themselves. On the faith lane, confession is given to you. Because confession is made unto salvation. If at the end of it all, it does not produce salvation, it's not confession. So confession is not motivation as saints. Confession comes out of revelation knowledge. Remember the woman with issue of blood. That is confession. If I may but touch... There, there was no way she could have known what was domiciled at the end of the garment. So when confession is given, it comes from the womb of the spirit. Confessions are offered online. And that's why it's good for you to write your confession for the year. 
But as you are doing that long time confession for the year, be also sensitive for the confession for the day. Because fullness is operationalized by the prayer. Give us this day. God is a daily God. Day unto day utter speech. Night unto night show forth knowledge. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. So, so that means you must also hear his voice while it is called today. So I have also daily confessions. What is it about today? It is the day that the Lord has made. There's a reason why he made that day. And that's why he said we will rejoice and be glad in it. And that's how you begin to write your confession because there's a prophetic notion on the faith lane. <laughs> and that's why the first man to worship in scripture was also the father of faith. And when Abraham was worshiping, there was no keyboard. It wasn't a slow song. It was a man obeying God. He said, take your son. You see, that is the password. Your only son that you love and go sacrifice him to me on one of the mountains. It was that operation that Abraham called worship. He said, the lad and I will go yonder and worship and come back to you again. And that was how Abraham unlocked Jehovah Jireh. You don't understand. Jehovah Jireh is not the name of God. It's the name of a place in God. What, is, what happens in that place? That is where your obedience unlocks the provision of God. Because Jehovah Jireh is that God already provided. He was just waiting for you to obey. While Abraham was coming up with Isaac on the side of the mountain, there was already a ram waiting. Because you can never beat God at the level of sacrifice. That a man will first of all sacrifice to God and surprise God, it will never happen. So Abraham, all that God wanted Abraham to unlock was to discover the provision he already made. And just like this donkey too, that ram was caught in the ticket. That means the ram was trying to escape. God says, Jehovah Jireh is the reason why you will not escape. Jehovah Jireh is the reason why nobody ever rode you. Jehovah Jireh is the reason why this ram was never eaten by anybody, but was waiting for Abraham. Jehovah Jireh is the reason why you are stepping into wealth. And, and those dimensions of wealth are waiting for you because your name is on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Could it be that it's just because of you that CBN is doing this thing that they are doing? <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> The question we should ask ourselves is that, how did the ram get up there? How? Because even for Abraham to get there, it took three days. Was it that that ram was not being fed for three days? Or God just dropped the ram from heaven? You see, that is, those are the questions we cannot ask. Because fullness is what is being deployed here. And when fullness is happening, some strange things will happen. Things will just be dropped like the donkey no man ever rode, a ram caught in the ticket, and Abraham went there and just took it, and he called the name of the place, Jehovah Jireh. For at the mount of the Lord, God, he shall be seen. So somebody is seeing the provision this morning. <laughs> so after he did all that, the following day, just to prepare them for that day, because he wanted to teach them the God kind of faith. So he made sure something, just like I said yesterday, because when Christ moved, that was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So everything was arranged to communicate fullness. Everything was arranged to communicate from faith to faith. So I was in that manifesting for him. I said, now that you guys have learned that everything is passworded, let me now show it to you at a higher level. So, he knew that was not the season. Because in fullness, there's nothing called season. No, you didn't hear what I said. Fullness can make demands outside of season. And season must respond. In fullness, there's nothing called no. What fruits do we have here? Pastor Shem, this is your wife. Wow. These are also my friends. 
What, what season? What season of fruit do we have around? Mango. They don't come every time. So they come at certain times. Imagine it was not time for mango. And fullness says, I will have mango. Did you read it in your Bible? For it was not season. Is that in your Bible? You, you read that? So it wasn't that I didn't know. But you see, he, he wanted to show us what is called the God kind of faith. So he must look for something out of season. To demonstrate that season, the one that created season, can override season. Because I've come to realize that in most cases our idea of timing is religiously underpinned. So it's not yet time. God's time is the best. God's time is the best. <laughs> so when is God's time? <laughs> so why can't now be God's time? And when we say God's time is the best, it's because we want to push something to the future. So we just religiously really use that to, to, to excuse our failure and our inability to obtain. We just say, maybe it's not yet God's time. Now we want to see God's time. Yeah. This is fullness. So you can't know time more than him. Yeah. So he was hungry and he looked at the tree and he said, let me see whether I can get something here. And the tree made a mistake to say to him, don't you know it's not yet my season? Why are you looking for fruit? And I said, Jesus heard. I said, I hear you. And I said, he responded. Did you see? In response, Jesus said to it. <laughs> Pastor Sam, <laughs> look at what Jesus said to it. On the faith lane in spiritual warfare, many of us are too direct. That's why it's not working. Jesus did not say, oh, you three, die. <laughs> that is lower spiritual intelligence. That's not fullness. Fullness is that what you tell a tree, that the tree will interpret it to say, I need to commit suicide now. <laughs> yeah. It must be password. That means Jesus went into higher intelligence and told the three something that the three says, anybody they tell this kind of a thing must, must vacate the planet. There's, there's no point hearing this and staying there. <laughs> that means everything created by God, sir understands God. Yes. There is nothing God created. The, the, the only, you see, the only problem perhaps are human beings. Yes. Maybe we're the only beings God created that is difficult for us to hear God. And even after we hear him, we pretend as if we're not here. <laughs> but every other thing, the sea, the waves, they obey him. Yeah. They don't have any problem. Money. Oh, look. Just like the prophecy we are giving this morning, you will see how wealth, because those things obey God, they don't have issues. But those things are now waiting for you and I. Because Jesus said, let no one. And the tree looked at himself. He said, if no one is going to eat from me again, why am I here? <laughs> that means. By this declaration, he just took from me my essence. He said to me, I'm no longer fit for purpose. And therefore, why do I need to be here? It's better I just die. And the tree just died. The fish withered. So question. What did Jesus say to the tree? In the realm of the spirit, if you want something to die, if you want something to be alive, what you must say to it must be communicated to you. Don't say it in English, say it in spirit. Because what, what Jesus said to a natural man did not mean wither. But spiritually, he meant wither. So, spiritual intelligence on the faith lane is as such that confessions are so powerful 
that when they uninitiated, they are listening to your confession. They don't even know the depth of what you are saying. For instance, during this meeting, after this meeting, God is going to give somebody confessions for wealth. <laughs> and don't, don't wake up and say, money is coming to me. No, you see, those are low-level confessions. There, must, there is something you say to money. Oh, that wherever that money is, <laughs> it was just that looking for you. Because it's called calling forth. It's called bringing forth. That was what Jesus was demonstrating here. That season or no season. That means Jesus is saying, when fullness comes, is it that you give me what I want or you cease to exist? That I will operate in fullness and an entity on earth will not give me what I want and will still be there. It will never happen. Season or no season. Because I created you, Fig. I can I that created you now place a demand on you. And you now want to excuse that on the basis of season? You don't know who is talking. This is the fullness of the Godhead. You are not saying season. If that Fig had spiritual intelligence, it would just tap into resources immediately and start manufacturing. Photosynthesis will start happening. The plant will start manufacturing food and say, how can my creator place a demand? See, it is this level of confession that wealth will listen to wherever it is. It will say, ah, uh ah, -uh, I don't want to make the mistake the feet made. The silver is his own. The gold is his own. So when you begin to make this kind of confession, wealth is listening because I will show you what now happened next. So Jesus makes sure while he was addressing that feet that we had, there was a mountain on the other side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're not getting what I'm saying. He made sure that mountain saw what happened. Peter now said, how did this happen? He said, have faith in God. <laughs> or, and, and the, the funny thing is that, sir, the first time I came to Summit, that was what you were teaching. And I still remember that day, the God kind of faith. And, and your words were like, I actually used your very words this morning because you were the first to say, and that was the first time I heard that. He said, so that we don't make mistake about what that is in the next verse. I actually heard that from Dr. Andy Osakwe. He explained what that was. And that was the first time I would hear that. He now said, whosoever. <laughs> because when you get the password right, you become whosoever. <laughs> so that whosoever is not like people say whosoever. Whosoever. God, there. it's just like your, even though you are putting 2603, let your son, 2604, let your son go and put 2603, which is the correct one. The system will open up. So that means that whosoever is the one who has the right password. So what makes you whosoever is that you have the utterance. You see, when Paul was praying, the utterance will be given unto me. Because on the day of Pentecost, what made people to hear them in their own language was utterance. It was not English. So utterance is a breaker of divide. Because how can somebody be speaking one language? And the Bible listed about 24 nations and they say we hear them speaking in our own language. So what utterance does is that you speak to money in the language of money. Speak to favor in the language of favor. There is a language favor cannot resist. That is why in, in, in articulating things of the spirit, God has to give us tongues. And when we are speaking in tongues, it looks as if it's not sensible. But, but, but Paul said, I'll be it. He speaks mysteries. No man understands him. But I'll be it. He speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. And one day Paul said, let me even show you one of those mysteries. So I'll show you a mystery. That means they've been saying it in tongues. They didn't even know that was. He said, we will not all die. But we will all be changed. That's a mystery. In a moment. 
in the twinkling of an eye. That means Paul said, some of the things we are saying is that we will not die. We will be changed. That means our change will not take time. It will be in a moment. Imagine somebody was saying that, and that's why suddenly the person will just move into a dimension of wealth that is strange, but all along he's been saying it. So here was a mountain. This was a fig tree. She just now said, hmm, have, please give us that scripture. We need to, oh my, we need to close now. Sir, can I just have five minutes just to wrap this up? Thank you, sir. Let's wrap this up. Hallelujah. Please give, give us that scripture. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Mark 11, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. And in the next verse, for as I said to you, whosoever says, let's say this is the mountain. This was where the fig tree was. He made sure he spoke to the fig tree in the presence of the mountain. <laughs> so that mountain saw what happened to the fig tree. When the fig tree refused, that mountain saw the fate and the destiny of the fig tree. Jesus now say, I'm not talking about every mountain. He said, whoever shall say to this mountain that just saw the fate of the fig tree. <laughs> you think creation is not sensitive? Just like when Peter had faith, he was walking on water. Lost faith, it started sinking. Creation is that sensitive. <laughs> so that mountain said, uh uh. <laughs> I saw what happened. Whosoever shall say. You know, again, he gave us another password. That means it doesn't matter how anointed you are. If you say to that mountain, I want to lift you, nothing will happen. If you say to that mountain, in the name of Jesus, we'll remove you. Nothing will happen. So Jesus is saying, for this mountain, let me reveal to you what you need to say to it, to move it. So when you get to this mountain, don't say any other thing. Just say, be removed. And if you just say, be removed, you've only manifested 30 fold. You must also say, be cast into the sea. That means if you go to that mountain, you just say, be removed. It will just be looking at you. Because he's still expecting another instruction. Okay, when you remove me, where am I going? <laughs> because you are saying be removed. Should I go to your house? <laughs> be removed and be cast into the sea. He showed us the password to deal with the feet. He also showed us the password to deal with the mountain. So that means in God, your previous breakthrough is the answer for the next breakthrough. It's called from faith to faith. That means any failure today is instructing the environment that failure is normal. That is why you must deliberately make sure that any manifestation of faith is dealt with because the mountain is watching. It's next. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. And that is why when David killed the bear and the lion, Goliath did not know he was next. And David had to draw from that. David had to say, The Lord that delivered me from the paw of the bear and from that of the lion will also deliver me. Because your previous testimony will strengthen the next testimony. Jesus did not say, say that. You see, that's the mistake we are not making. What he said, say to this mountain, this one. You want to say to all the mountains. Mm -mm. It doesn't work that way. Faith is password specific. This, because, you see, the experience of this mountain is different from the experience of this mountain. This one did not see the fig tree. This one did not see fullness. So, the one that saw fullness, that saw fig tree dealt with, what you say to it is different. And that's why Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this. And this is where faith is now very, very specific. In every situation, God can tell you what to say now. That does not mean if a similar situation should arise tomorrow, that is what you say. Because this mountain ceases the day that confession that is made for it is operationalized. The next mountain again becomes this mountain. You must know what to say to this mountain. 
In God, there is nothing to say to all the mountains at the same time. Every mountain is unique. And what you say to every mountain is different. It must be communicated to you. And Jesus said, this is the God kind of faith. You don't just go to the mountain to address the mountain. You say to the mountain what I tell you to say to it. So even if it's a small boy that go, goes down there and says, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. You know why he's not doubting? Because those words are not his words. They were given to him. So there's no reason to doubt. And he believed that what things he says shall come to pass, he will have it. Look at your life now as we close this morning. What can you describe as the feet? And what can you describe as a mountain? Because they are always situated in the same situation and they are looking at themselves. And the mountain is saying, if I'm not careful, <laughs> I don't want my destiny to be like that of this feet. So I'm ready to obey. That means your victory, what you are telling the environment is that whatever is coming next, be ready to obey. Because I will punish disobedience. <laughs> Is somebody there? Be thou removed. And Jesus said, that is a God kind of faith. That, that, see, as we close, please can you get on the keyboard, please? Let's close. Okay, I have about 10 minutes more. Well, we'll spend part of the time to pray, but let, let's close. I want you to lift up your hand and just pray in the spirit for one minute so that we can continue just to seal no, no, we're, we're still teaching. You might be seated. Just to pray. Why are you seated, please? Ragadina Baba. Mizab Ragadina Makobo La Ragadina Mashtab. Whosoever. Makobo Bobosko Prekishida Prekudina Ba. Hold on. You know, we've been told before now that whosoever can have whatsoever. It's not in that context. Whosoever can have whatsoever. Because whosoever was given what to say. They didn't manufacture it. And that is why we come for conferences like this. As we were closing yesterday, uh, you, you heard Pastor Andy declaring words over us. See, those are not empty words. Those things are to set us up so that, so that we can have encounters, so that fullness, because Jesus just manifested the fact that fullness is password specific. So yesterday we learned what you need to do. Today we're learning what you need to say. And that you don't just say it openly. You say it. Because that was what was communicated to you. So about your next breakthrough, about the next thing you want God to do for you, what do you need to say? So this mountain. The reason why the mountain is not moving is that even the mountain is waiting for you to say something to it. So Jesus just gave to us. For this, maybe for another mountain, there, there's something else you need to say. Say, Paul, let me tell you the secret of lifting this one. Just go through it and say, be removed. <laughs> and be cast into the sea. So that means this mountain has two levels of instruction, two step instruction. It wants to be removed, but at the same time, you must also tell us his destiny. Where is it going? And once the mountain hears remover and destination, the mountain will go. Spiritual things are that real. Spiritual things are very sensitive. Faith is a very sensitive enterprise. You can't just manufacture confessions. It must be given to you. And that is why the full bandwidth of the manifestation of faith is undergirded by the notion of the Holy Spirit. It must be given to you. You cannot be a man of faith and not be a man of the Spirit. And that is why the blessing of Abraham is the Holy Spirit. Galatians 3.13, let's close from them 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Having become a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham, look at that, might come upon the Gentiles. He didn't say the blessings. He said the blessing. It's just one. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. And what is that blessing? The next statement. That we might receive. 
that we might receive the ministry or the promise or the saints or intelligence of the spirit through faith. So the reason why you're on the faith lane is to open you up for a dimension of the ministry of the spirit. That's why faith is not mechanical. It is driven by the notion of the ministry of the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can tell us what to say, what to do, and as we are saying, as we are doing, fullness is activated. And like we said, that begins with grace being extended. So that you can receive grace for grace. And after grace is extended, faith is activated. So that you can move from faith to faith. And after faith is activated, the glory is released. So that you can move from glory to glory. So because fullness cannot be dispensed wholly like that, fully like that, without us disappearing, God gave us three systems of advantage. One is grace, one is faith, and one is glory. So whenever God is inviting you to step into grace, it is because faith is actually the end result. Because it is of faith that it might be according to grace. So that the promise might be sure to all the seeds. Then of course, at the end of it, all glory is where God is taking us to. So that we can move from glory to glory by the Spirit of God as we behold in a glass that same image we have been transformed. Hallelujah. And that is where faith is interesting because it opens us up to another vista when it comes to the ministry of the Spirit. And that is the meaning of Acts of the Apostles. It was a story of people of faith who were led by the Spirit and who changed their world, who conquered their world. Oh, blessed be God. I'd like us to rise up this morning. <laughs> we're going to pray in the Spirit for the rest of the time that we have. I want everybody to lift up their voices as we begin to pray. And as we're praying, there's a move of the Spirit all over the house. Eke ma solo freda baba shida da da E ma la freda ba si de bo Ma kaba la si da da ba shida ba E koma la freda ba si de bo Ye freda ma ma si de de bo A kama la freda ba si de bo Je ke ma la freda ba da ba Se praga de ma si da freke shida ba I ke ma la freda ba 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 si de freda Yaka la prabo si le frak daj de Eka ma la freda jida Aka ba si le fraka na ma ma si da da Ya fraka ma si da ba ba sa frake jida ba Ki ba la frake dina ma ma si da fraka jida ba Eka ma la freda ba ba si da ma Ma la is somebody praying this morning Ma ga la freda ba ba Jo pra ba ba si da freni na si da 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 Ya bala fra ba ba zuda ba ba Ja pra ma ma suda fra ke jida ba Le pra ke dina ba 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 E ma ka duro fra ke dina ma ma so pra shita ba E ka ba 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 so pra ke dina ma ma zira pra E ya ba ka zuro fra ka da ba Mo ba la fra ke duro ba 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 zuda ba Ja fra ka duna ma ma suda fra ke do Ba la fra ka dina ma zo pra ka jida ba Ezo praka dona na mazudo bro, ma la preke dina mama mazo preke jira ba, au kaba la preke dina mama sudo preke jira ba. In Jesus' name, I'm hearing that word again in my spirit. Wealth. The Swami Bible Church Abuja is now a house of wealth. Because people are coming into wealth. Did you notice it's not saying people are coming into money? Because wealth is more than money. Wealth is money with purpose. Wealth is money on assignment. Wealth is money that facilitates the expansion of the kingdom. And I said, for you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18, it gives you power. And that power has been given this morning. Amen. There are seven people in the house this morning that the Lord is anointing specifically for wealth. 
And it's going to give you favor with the eye and the mighty. And how do you know you are the one? Upon your right palm, you are going to begin to feel the anointing. And that anointing is signifying that whatever you touch. And somebody is literally feeling it on their palm now, just the same way I'm feeling it now. And upon somebody is coming as a oil of joy. <laughs> and the Lord is saying the reason why the word is here to come is that you are sad. Now let us put an end to this episode of sadness. And to know that it is you, this laughter is just going to come on you. And you just be laughing. <laughs> that is oil of joy. Oil of joy is a notion of the anointing for wealth. And that's why the Lord will always tell the people, rejoice. Rejoice. Oh, Yabaka Zidaba. So the anointing is up another set of seven people now. It's coming out of your spirit now. Manifesting as the oil of joy. And the third level is a prophetic grace. Ability to interpret data, to read in between prophetically, to know where to invest prophetically. So that eyes that see, ears that hear, seeing the invisible, hearing the inaudible, and touching the intangible. I hear in my spirit this morning that the reward of the prophets. So there's prophetic agitation, prophetic activation to bring in wealth because the prophetic can create wealth where there is none. So this is a generation of wealth creators. Elijah by prophecy created a new economy. Elisha by prophecy created a new economy. And it was in the book of the prophet. The Lord says, the silver is mine. And the gold is mine. And the glory of this latter house. In Jesus' name. Finally this morning. That means all together there are 14 people here. The seven, the first instance, and that's the next seven. Who have been activated? Oh. You know, the moment I said that word activated, the glory of God just filled the house. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is all over the house. Because activations are going on now. Wealth activation. Favor activation. Joy activation. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord.